All right, hello everyone. It is time to play some more Baroque. Uh, so yesterday I streamed the Nintendo Switch port of the Japanese version of this game. Um, however, there was an issue with the recording which made uh, <laughs> archiving it a little bit difficult. So we are going to uh, start fresh with the English translation, which is actually a, uh, a PS1 translation. So we'll be playing this on, on PS1 for the English version. And I'll probably just do a pre-recorded Let's Play of the Japanese version that can just like live on the channel forever, um, which I think is a good compromise. So uh, Blue asks, am I enjoying this game? I think this game is very cool. Now, let me just really quickly set this up. I believe we should be getting game audio now. Do we have game audio? Seems like it. Uh, I am going to play the attract mode demos for uh, the game. And the reason behind this is if I let them play on loop, uh, it will play this video, which is licensed music, which will get me demonetized. So uh, we're gonna start with each of these two and then just play, uh, start the game from there, so. Alrighty, uh, so that one was <laughs> the opening video. Uh, let me see if I can play this one next.
So yeah, <laughs> those are the openings for the game. Uh, don't worry, I will go over here and turn down the volume. I know the volume was very loud in those, but unfortunately, if you edit the volume in these settings, it doesn't seem to actually uh, affect the volume like in the title screen. <laughs> so <laughs> I just had to do that before I hit start. Uh, we'll go there, hit save changes. All right, and I think this should be a little bit better for us. Uh, should be a little bit closer to, to okay volume. Uh, all right, so let's start the game. This time you'll be able to read everything and I won't need to translate it all. <laughs> So we're naming our character Alin, which is, again, uh, a uh, kind of old uh, South American, Mesoamerican mythological name. Might be familiar. If Here we are. All right, so this is once again Baroque, uh, this time for the PlayStation 1. There are obviously some slight differences in how the game looks on PS1 compared to Saturn. Unfortunately, the Saturn version does look a lot better than the PS1 version, but we'll do our best here. So right away, there's already a different encounter right there. There's that Thing Thing character. Look to the east, the distorted ones writhe in pain. Surely there's no point in replicating such fools. So Thing Thing right here is like an inventory person. We can store stuff with him. And right away we get the archangel telling us, hey, here's a, uh, look to the east, to our right. There are uh, people. There are uh, individuals we can interact with. A strange voice can be heard from coming from the nerve tower. My eyes are twitching, twitching, they won't stop. The pretend angels are speaking, they're saying go to the nerve tower. All right. Just like last time, we're gonna want to go over here and beat up these fishes for experience. Now, there is one slight difference between this and the Saturn version, and it's that uh, we actually have access to the tutorial right away in the PS1 version. So, we're already level two. We can also walk over here and talk to Coffin Man. And he says, how about some training? Please step in, goddammit. Sorry, it'll only take a moment, goddammit. If you die, you're all mine. If that's all right with you, please dive in. Oops, could you let me measure your height? There you are. I just remembered this from yesterday. Splinter says, at least the audio quality is better than the Saturn version. I think my capture card just doesn't like my Switch very much. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Don't wear out your life and soul. Make sure you keep your goddamn HP and VT as high as you can. What? Uh, when your HP reaches zero, you die. Try not to take damage. We knew that. Attack with the circle button. Don't think about dodging. Just try attacking the grotesques head on. God damn it. Oops. 
Bravo, when you purify a grotesque, it'll drop an item or crystal. If you pick up a crystal, you'll recover a small bit of VT. There we go. That's a little bit better for me. Alright. Purification obtained. So purification is the name of one of our swords. That's right. I see you equipped it. God damn it. That's good. You can equip using the item screen. There are a bunch of different grotesques and swords, so there are a lot of ways to attack. Good luck, god damn it. There are tons of tough grotesques on the next floor. Please be careful and don't let your goddamn guard down. The beginning uh, is the tough part, don't die. I'm moving really quickly right now because I don't want to run out of VT. You do more damage when you're close to a grotesque, so please get right up in their face and rain down to hell, goddammit. I don't know if that's actually true. <laughs> uh, here we go. Fruit obtained. Restores all VT, raises VT max by 25 of eaten while VT is full. We're gonna save that for now. If you get hit from behind or surrounded, it means trouble. Stay alert in rooms with a lot of grotesques. Press the X button to bring up the 2D map. Please use this to keep from getting lost, God damn it. Swords, coats, and wings are equipable items. Open the item screen with the triangle button and try equipping them, god damn it. Uh, so one of the reasons why I'm actually not too worried about my VT getting too low is that it will start to drain my health once it's at zero, but it doesn't instantly kill me, and there is a healing platform in town. Now, I don't know if this is just a factor of the controller or uh, and like some sort of smoothness made by playing the uh, PS1 version over the Saturn version, but it's actually way easier to dodge enemies on the PS1 version. I have no idea why that is. When your VT reaches zero, your HP will start depleting. We know that. Just got a critical on him. Five bravos. Six bravos. Seven bravos. Eight bravos. So you beat them. You're strong. That's not good. Or I guess that is good. He just wants to like rob our corpse. <laughs> Splinter says, is the goddammit supposed to be a verbal tick, like anime characters constantly saying desu? Sort of. Um, he speaks simultaneously with really polite and really, like, improper Japanese at the same time. So the form that he's using is like, he basically says like, please, I hope you have the best time of your life. But the way he says like, your is really direct and uh, unkind. And the way he says, like, please have a good time is, like, really absurdly nice. Coffin Man's Dungeon for Dummies ends after you go down here, so look forward to next time, goddammit. Oh, hey, Apollo. Welcome to the stream. Your VT's at zero, so your HP will start depleting. No other items for us to pick up this time. Oh, yeah, one more piece of advice. Try using L1, R1 to move around swiftly, goddammit. Uh, so Basque says this guy's a Patches-esque uh, motherfucker, and uh, I think this game takes a lot from Kingsfield and from FromSoft games. Uh, I believe Kingsfield 1 came out in 1995, I want to say, and while it does not have a Patches character, uh, it feels very much like this game uh, might be taking from some of the storytelling and some of the, the ideas from Kingsfield 2 and 3 especially, so... Kind of interesting to see the the start of that here. All right, so we have one VT. Before we move forward, we gotta talk to Angel. I see you're weakened. 
Open a map with X button and go to the indicated position. It's a recovery pattern. Stand on it and recover. I don't want to do that yet. Can you remember anything? It seems you're having difficulty speaking. But if that's the extent of your problems, then you must think yourself fortunate. You're here to learn what it is you have to do. Understand? Head for the depths of the nerve tower. That is your mission. Use this. There is a significance in you using it. All right. So we're gonna stand on this pattern, recover all of our HP and our vitality. And while we're standing on it, we're gonna use this fruit to increase our vitality to 124. Now, we can proceed to the nerve tower. I probably could have gotten a little bit more experience from the fishes that respawned, but it should be fine. Oh yeah, I'll be fine. Alrighty. So we're gonna gnaw on this experience bone. Can you hear my voice? I hope you can come to where I am soon. Ooh. Bone obtained, idiot obtained, pathetic obtained. Gotta grab that item. And we'll grab the girder. Okay. So, these things are the different items that we have. On the PS1 version, they have icons, so we can see what we picked up. Idiot is idiot's meat. In the game, uh, the health items are uh, like f the flesh of enemies that have fallen. So, uh, or people, I guess people who went to the nerve tower before you, total possibility. Uh, it is ranked by how smart the person you're eating was. So in this case, an idiot's meat is the weakest, genius's meat is the best. We're gonna eat it so that we increase our HP max. Uh, we have a girder, which multiplies the bones we're carrying. That will be important later. We do not need the pathetic coat. It is not useful for us. However, we do wanna pick up this box. Ooh, double-edged, that's actually useful. Yields a sword, but your HP will be halved. That's fine. Oh, a guillotine came out of the box. That's awesome. Sword that hits twice. I'll throw that sword away. I don't need the pathetic again. So, uh, inventory management is like a huge part of this game. As we learned yesterday. Oh, heck yeah, we spawned into a room full of items. There we go. Corpse, uh, Crypt Angels over there, which is really nice. Got a freezing uh, bomb. This room is tightly packed. So it might seem like we took a lot of damage there, um, but we're actually doing totally fine. Oh, another double-edged sword. That's awesome. Uh, double-edged box, I mean. Let's open it again. Another guillotine. That's fine. It's useful to use those uh, while we're at low health because it means we lose less health overall. We're going to throw that meat at the Crypt Angel because it will purify it. The R next to it means that it's rotten. So we just ate that, recovered 30 HP. The girder. Uh, I'm not gonna use the girder yet. Go. I'm gonna use the brand on myself to see what it did. Oh, what did that do? Let's see. raises the distance and damage of thrown items. That's awesome for us because bones are actually gonna be our best long-range weapon in the game. So torture glass sword is just visible within the box. May explode when open. We'll wait for that. I'll probably give that to the box guy uh, if we need it. All right, um, so what just happened there? I equipped the grounding coat, which gives you resistance to electricity just because it's better than just the base two uh, defense coat. Unfortunately, uh, it has an adhesive on it, so I can't get rid of it yet. There is a technique to getting rid of it, but uh, it takes a little bit of luck to encounter, so it will take a bit for us to actually get usage out of that. So, 
the crypt, uh, the, the staircase down that portal is right there, but we're not actually gonna go in it yet because this happens. Which of us will die in a mysterious face floating towards us? It's all that happens on this floor. I think we missed that event yesterday. Anyway, we're off to a pretty strong start. Level five already. The bottom floor here is the fifth basement. Don't die, come down and burn your duty into your brain. Oh God. We might need to let ourselves heal. I'm getting a little bit too close to comfort there. We just got a convergence trap, which allows us to pull all of the enemies on the floor into this room at once. Uh, which is actually a pretty strong trap if you have other traps available to you. Our VT is actually pretty high right now, uh, so we can actually... Let's see, what else is in here? We'll lure that thing over. Come on, come fight us. Those fish are called Moon, so they are named after the Arcana, the tarot card. Another pathetic coat. We won't get rid of that one yet because uh, we can throw it at stuff. Oh yeah, idiot flesh. Perfect. Oh no, but it's rotten. <laughs> we'll have to wait till we can find another cryptid. Another box. That's even more great. We're gonna be so lucky when the uh, box man shows up. All right. All right. So here's something we're gonna do. Explodes and damages the surrounding area. Do that. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't kill the. There we go. So one of the things about the PS1 version that's kind of interesting is that it feels a lot easier than the Saturn version, even though I think you start at slightly lower HP and VT. So one of the big differences between this and the Saturn version is that the Saturn version has less floors in the nerf tower, uh, which while seemingly that would make it easier, it actually makes it harder because you have less time to level up. Ooh, a detox, nice. We're sitting pretty with our inventory right now. We're doing pretty well. stand up to the minor surface strafing. Alright, oh, we got some average. Excellent. 
Heal ourselves to full. Let's see. Do we want this yet? No. Ah. So we're going to switch over to the Guardian. Um, and the reason for that is this increases our defense. Just useful to have. I'll probably... It, we have two guillotines. I can probably just get rid of them. It's nice to have the two attacks, but it doesn't actually... I don't think it increases our DPS enough to really warrant it. Ooh, another box. How wonderful. Oh, an uncertain box. Perfect. Ooh, and another sword. What is this? Oh. Alright. Pathetic coat only did one damage. That wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Fifty-four damage. Alright. Uh let's use an experience bone to see if we can level up. Ultimately faster than using the uh, guillotine sword anyway. Alright, we don't need to use this sword at all, it's only two damage, we'll just throw it. Use it as a throwing weapon. Increase our vitality max. Don't need to use the convergence yet. Um, we'll wait to use the idiot meat. There we go. Oh, great. There's another one here. So theoretically, we can endlessly farm experience here, but at a certain point, it will uh, not be like worth it to waste our time fighting these things. There we go. So we need to go this way to explore the rest of the floor. So the game incentivizes like exploring the whole floor before you move on for a variety of reasons, but namely so that you can level up. Oh, huh. Worker Angel. I'm Urim. The name's Thumin. What? <laughs> oh, no, it's his shoulder head said I'm Urim, and then he's Thumin. The bottom layer is now on the fifth floor, but I don't know what will happen when you get there. Now hurry to the bottom layer. Alrighty. Neat. This game's so cool. <laughs> that rifle. D use that. So that person seems to be trying to get me not to use the rifle. Ah, oh, damn it, it blinded me. I didn't get far enough anyway. Alright, um... Let's see... Oh, okay. Blindness is just mostly an inconvenience in this game. It doesn't actually affect my accuracy, I don't think. Oh, yay. Oh, sweet! I got a heal, uh... I got a heal torture. That's awesome.
average. Of course, the average is uh, rotten. So we'll just hold on to that stuff for as long as we can. Hopefully we'll find a Crypt Angel. Oh, Gnome Pro is now following. Hey, thanks for following. Ah, yeah, from the Cream Team. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Welcome on in. The, uh, for, for those who, uh, have not paid attention, uh, to the revival, uh, the Cream Team is a, uh, a group of content creators, uh, namely Case Blackwell, Passim G, and Fiona Nova, who, uh, were part of the G4 TV revival. Uh, however, when it got axed, uh, they kind of moved on to do their own thing. There are other members, too, like Kevin Pereira is there uh, for the streams and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, I hang out in that Discord. They're, they're pretty cool people. I'm a big fan uh, of that community. So, give everyone from the, the Cream Team a, a warm welcome. They're, it's a pretty fun uh, content uh, brand, basically. They're pretty cool. But yeah, welcome to the stream now. Uh, oh, I do not have a... Uh, I don't have a... Detox. Stay away. There we go. All right, so we got a detox. We're not doing too bad right now. Another double-edged box. So the double-edged boxes are pretty useful because they'll do a flat 50% uh, status to the enemy, which just kind of makes everything easier to kill and it doesn't scale. It's just straight up 50%, so. Gnome says, I totally dig the avatar setup and always interested how it works. Uh, basically, the way that it works is uh, pretty simple. Um, you use a uh, program called like VC Face, or um, I think Vroid Studio is one of them. Uh, and you have a VRM model, which is uh, the 3D asset file that uh, you know is your actual model, your character. And it uses a combination of webcam and IR face tracking to track your face. If you have a like a leap motion, you can use it to do hand tracking. Um, it's pretty much set and forget, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna drop that bone really quick because I want to pick up the meat. Oh, excellent. It was not rotten. So we can use that to increase our HP. Oh, I teleport. That was a teleport bone. That's awesome. Got us up to level 10, too. Alright, I'm gonna do something a little bit risky right now. And, uh, how far am I into this? Oh, it's probably not worth it right now. Uh, I was going to use a convergence trap to, to find all the enemies in the area, but it looks like we only have one room left, so it's not really worth using. Oh, maybe it was. That's fine. Nice. Murdered all the enemies instantly. There he is. Oop. Got 
Tox, that's great, because these things can poison us. Oh, careful. There we go. Alright, oh, and we found the stairs. Oh, uh, yeah, we've been in here before. Come on, just kill this thing. Go on down. So one of the other uh, small changes that this version has compared to the Saturn version is that it's lacking uh, some of the ambient sound effects. Can you hear my voice? I'm addressing you through the sense sphere. Now fire the angelic rifle, purify the insane god of creation and preservation. So we had like a full inventory. We didn't really need to worry too much about using any of it. Remember your duty, shoot the angelic rifle at the bottom floor and purify the world. He just called me garbage. Simple, eh? All right. And we are back to the start. So that was the first loop. You'll see it's here, it says like a rising data saving. That's basically the game's uh, hard saves. You can suspend a save and load it um, just in order to uh, like pick up from the floor that you left off on. But uh, arising saves are the only ones that actually permeate or, or last. 